Hey everybody, today we're gonna to prepare a classic shepherd's pie for the winter months. We're gonna use New Wave's precision induction cooktop to start the dish. And we're gonna finish it in a New Wave oven elite. So to get this started, I'm gonna set our precision induction cooktop onto sear. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna grate some carrots and some onions. Instead of chopping them finely, I wanna grate them so they melt sort of into the sauce a little more. We're gonna get a little more flavor, a little more richness out of it. So we're gonna start with a tablespoon of good extra virgin olive oil. We wanna make sure that we work quickly with the vegetables because that'll keep getting the vegetables into the oil is gonna keep the oil from smoking. We don't want the oil to smoke, it's going to set up a whole new issue there for us. First I start with the carrots, take a little longer to cook. I grate them right into a bowl. And again, this grating technique, something that you don't see often, usually they ask you to chop the vegetables finely or small dice or something. I like this because they're actually gonna just leave a very small trace inside the meat, but you're gonna taste them pretty intensely. So this is actually a technique that I use quite a bit when I'm making a braise or a stew. My carrots, I'm gonna get right in the pan. And then after this, we're gonna take our lamb. Now you could use all ground beef if you want, it's no crime. I've got a mixture of ground lamb and ground beef. So here's my carrots going right in. Do a little sizzle there. And then go straight away and do the onion. All I do with the onion was peel it. I didn't even cut it in half. I'm just gonna grate it. I'm gonna get all the onion juice, all those fibers, almost like a puree of onion going into the sauce. You can think how that's gonna melt in there. It's gonna be wonderful. Then I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how we're cooking these vegetables. Two different ways recipes ask you to cook vegetables. Usually you saute them or to sweat them. We're gonna saute ours, and I'll tell you why. I'm clean this up. The reason we're going to saute ours is because I want some color. I want some caramelization. So here goes my onion, the rest of my carrots. You hear that sizzle? That's the caramelization process right there. When you're asked to sweat vegetables, usually what that means is you don't want any color. So what we'll do is we'll add a little salt. Brings the moisture out of the vegetables, prevents them from browning, causes them to steam. But I actually want to get a little color on here, which is doing pretty nicely. And then after that, I'm going to add the mince or the ground beef and the ground lamb. Now, believe it or not, from the lamb, we're not actually going to get a lot of fat. The fat content is actually going to come from the ground beef. And incidentally, this is uh, one of our, our perfect green pots we're using today. It's non-stick. Of course, I have silicone in there, not metal. We don't want to scratch it. But this thing conducts heat phenomenally. It's giving me nice color on my veg. And it's going to give me really nice color on my beef. So again, incorporate this with the veg. Now this doesn't happen fast. This is gonna take about eight, 10 minutes to slowly break down your meat and to get it to brown, release its fats, release its flavor. In the recipe I wrote for this, it does say after you brown the meat to drain the fat. Depending on what type of meat you're using, the beef or the lamb, if it's fattier and you get a lot of residual fat, we don't want that in the sauce, so put it in a colander, let it drain off and then return your meat and veg back to the pot. I have a feeling with the meat I'm using today, I'm not gonna get a lot of fat, which is a good thing. We're just gonna get all kinds of flavor. So what we're gonna do is after this browns, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to build the sauce in layers. We've got some very simple ingredients here. Of course, we're gonna have the flavor from the veg and the meat. We're gonna use some tomato paste as opposed to tomato puree. Tomato puree has water. Tomato paste has been cooked down, so it's just the essence of the tomato. We're gonna use some Worcestershire sauce. It's a very classic English condiment. A very classic in shepherd's pie. It's going to give a rich smokiness, almost a mushroom flavor to the shepherd's pie. We're going to use a good heavy glass of red wine. Cabernet Sauvignon works well. Merlot will work fine. And then our homemade beef stock. You can use store-bought beef stock. It's not a crime. Just make sure you check the sodium level because these are ones that you buy in the store are usually very salty. Uh, and then I have two really good hearty oil herbs. We have rosemary, fresh, and fresh thyme that I'm going to put in towards the end of the sauce. Let that simmer down and reduce. And then I'll show you after that how to top with our potatoes. So I'm gonna brown the meat and when we come back, we'll make the sauce. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back everybody. Now here in the pan, I've got the lamb and the beef browned off. And like I said before about the amount of fat coming off, maybe having to drain it. I actually didn't get a lot of fat out of mine. It was pretty lean. So what I'm gonna do straight away, is we're gonna go ahead and start building the sauce. Let me show you how we're gonna do that. A couple of ingredients we talked about, the tomato paste, and the Worcestershire, they're gonna go in first. And the reason why is I need the tomato paste 
to start to cook out and caramelize a little bit. It's full of sugar, believe it or not. By heating it, the sugar's gonna come out, darken, and give it a little richer flavor. So that takes about a minute. This pan is very hot. You can see we had the meat really nicely ground with the shredded vegetables, came out really nice. And as this simmers with the sauce, those vegetables are actually gonna melt away. You probably won't even see them in the finished dish. But you'll taste them, promise. Okay, so next, the Worcestershire sauce. And again, that rich coffee, mushroomy type flavor that I like so much. It's based on tamarind, Worcestershire sauce, if you didn't know. If I could say it right, it'd be fun. Now, from here, the wine. And again, Cabernet, Merlot, a good full-bodied, strong wine with some tannin. And the tannin is the thing in the mouthfeel of the wine that gives it a little bite, okay? Uh, not too much wine. We we'll save some for us to have later with our wonderful shepherd's pie. You can smell the wine, the Worcestershire coming together. This is gonna make a really nice stew. And again, now shepherd's pie, this is not a meat sauce. This is not supposed to be runny. This is supposed to be basically the meat and the vegetables just held together by the sauce. And later on, we're gonna to top it with the potatoes and I'm gonna show you. The herbs, again, oil herbs. That means they, they have oil inside them unlike water-based herbs like parsley, basil. Thyme and rosemary, very sturdy, good for stewing and long cooking. Fresh thyme, fresh rosemary. These guys are gonna start giving off their flavor, start giving off their oils. I mean, almost immediately they hit the heat and you can smell it right away. Okay, at this point, and again, I don't have a lot of liquid in this pan, it's wonderful. Now I'm gonna add my beef stock. The beef stock's gonna come up about halfway through the meat. So I have about two inches of meat in there. Stock's gonna come up about an inch. And we're gonna let that mix with the wine, the Worcestershire, the tomato paste, the herbs, and the meat juices that are in here. It's gonna stew down and it's gonna thicken. What we're gonna have is this beautiful, rich, dark, heady smell from the lamb, from the wine. And that's gonna be the base of the shepherd's pie. When we come back, we're gonna to finish topping the shepherd's pie with our potatoes that are gonna be finished with Parmesan cheese. And we're gonna put the whole, shepherd's pie inside our new wave elite oven and finish it off and I'll show you how we do that when we come back welcome back everybody okay here we have our finished base of the shepherd's pie we cooked the lamb we browned it off nice we added our sauce ingredients the Worcestershire the wine the beef stock the herbs the rosemary the thyme we let it simmer down on a precision induction cooktop I put it in our pan that's going to go inside our new wave elite and I did a little trick I put it in here, I put it in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes just to cool it off. And the reason I did that is very simple. When the mix in the sauce is colder, it's easier to spread the potatoes on top. When it's really hot, they have a tendency to slop around. Plus, we're going to reheat this when we're browning potatoes in our oven at temperature of about 400 for 12 to 15 minutes. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing up is I'm going to take an egg, and I'm going to add an egg to my potato. And what that does basically gives a little protein structure, going to help the potatoes hold together. You're not really gonna notice any flavor out of it. I'm gonna hit our potatoes with just a little bit of salt and not much, and I'll tell you why in a second, and a little black pepper. You could also use white pepper if you didn't wanna see the black pepper flakes in it, but I think it gives it a more rustic look. And again, the secret reason why I'm not using too much salt in the potatoes is because my secret weapon over here, uh, a little trick I learned from my dad. We're gonna use a really good quality Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. It's dry, it's sharp, it's gonna help hold the potatoes together, it's gonna give a beautiful brown crust to the top of the shepherd's pie, and it's gonna add an immense amount of flavor. So now in this, I gave a measurement in our recipe you'll see on, on the cooking club. Uh, I have a tendency when I'm adding Parmigiano cheese to a recipe to not follow the recipe. I like a lot of cheese. Um, and I think if you have at least a ratio of maybe three to one potato to cheese, you're not gonna have any issues cooking. Um, and also what we can do, and I'll show you when we get to that point, is I mix this, I'll top the pie, and then we can actually top the finished potatoes with a little extra cheese, uh, a little more browning effect, and give a little crunch at the end. So what I'll do is I'm gonna mix this, we're gonna top the pie, we're gonna bake it in our new wave elite at 400 for between 12 to 15 minutes. Once we do that, we're gonna take it out, then I'm gonna show you how to serve it. It's actually pretty good. Now, on the potatoes, some people make them a little wetter, if you think they're too stiff, you could add a little bit of milk. I don't. I like them stiff because I like them just baked to have a nice separation between the meat and the potato on top. Okay? So basically, we're just going to 
in a couple of different areas, I use my stirring spatula just to press it down. And then I'm going to use what's called a pallet knife or a pastry knife, pastry spatula sometimes it's called, to smooth it out and give a little decoration inside. But this way, by scooping up small pieces and moving it around, I don't have to shift the meat and the sauce around. And that'll save you a little bit of a headache. But don't be afraid to get your hand on there. It's your food. It's going to go in the oven. OK? You don't have to have a perfect seal around the end, but I'll show you how to clean it up so it looks nice when it comes out. And then this, let me clean this up. This is our palette knife. OK, and this is going to give us a nice, smooth, all the way around. And some of the excess will fall to the cutting board or to the table. Okay, and also when you do this, you will find out where your pie is lacking. I can put it right back on top. I need a little bit more in the center. And that's it. And I take my finger, I just like to run around the rim of the baking dish. Gives it a cleaner look. Now, if we were going to leave it like this, we can put really nice decoration just with the tip of the knife. Do you guys see that? It gives it almost like a little scallop look, and that'll bake in there. Uh, I usually don't do this, the decoration, if I'm going to put extra cheese on it. But just for the interest of teaching you this, I'll show you both. Also pays to have a steadier hand than mine to do this. Uh, so we'll just call ours a little more rustic. My mom does this dish and uh, it looks like she painted the things on with a stencil. They're so straight and rigid. All right, and then a little more of my beloved Parmigiano Reggiano right on the top. Not even enough to cover my decoration, just enough to give it a little more crisp, all right? In this goes into the new wave elite. The lid goes on. Cook temp, 400. Cook time, 12 to 15 minutes. So I'll set it at 15, and I'll come back and I'll look. I'll push start. When we come back, I'm going to show you the finished shepherd's pie and how to plate it up and serve your guests. Welcome back. We're going to finish our shepherd's pie dish. It's just finished cooking in a new wave elite oven. I'm going to take it out and set this on a holding rack. Very convenient. Keeps that heat off of you. Instead of wrestling this out like this, I'm just going to take my whole rack right out. Makes it a little easier. Put it on my cutting board. And then from here, I can pick up the pie, put it on my hot plate, put it on the hot plate on the table, and get ready to serve. Let me show you how I serve this up. Very simple and beautiful plate. Make sure you use a hot plate because this is going to be very hot in this pan. I like to do half moons. You can cut it into squares if you want. And I also like to give a big portion. And I like to have the portion lay on its side. If you guys can see this, I don't know. And sometimes there's a little extra meat in there. I know my brothers accuse me of cheating when I don't give them the extra meat that's inside there. I just like to put this right on here like that. Very simple, it's very elegant. And we top it with just a pinch of black pepper. Very traditional way of serving it. And this goes great. A nice glass of wine for the winter or whatever else you choose to drink. And this is it, our shepherd's pie. You can see all the way around. You see how the meat doesn't fall apart with the sauce. It kind of holds together, but it's still really juicy. You can still see it. And then the crust with the egg in there and the cheese makes this beautiful little cap of a layer on there. So you have two different textures in this dish. And I'm telling you, I can smell it from here, the rosemary, the thyme, the Worcestershire sauce, and this is just gonna be fantastic. Oh boy. You do that for your family at home with our new wave oven, you're gonna have a great holiday season. Thank you.